know, there's 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be created and more and more institutions and people are, are starting to hoard it. So the value will ultimately go up. But it also is important for the usage of it. And as adoption grows and there's more and more people using it, you can see that by the number of Bitcoin wallets in mm -hmm. existence, the more valuable it gets. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hustle Up podcast. My name is Clint. And I'm Jonathan. And today we're sitting down with two very special guests, Ethan Cortazzo from one, it's one technology. technology. Yeah. He's a sales director there. And Brandon Mintz, who is the founder and owner of Bitcoin Depot. Both of these guys are pretty cool. We've been taking the time to get to know them. Uh, let's dig in a little bit. Ethan, what do you do with one technology? <laughs> Yeah, so my role, I'm the sales director of One Technology. We're a no-code platform that allows us to build anywhere from startup to enterprise-level software without writing a single line of code. So my role has been the first sales hire to pioneer what our business is today and where it's going. So Let's it's go. been pretty exciting, um, you know, going to a technology field where I didn't have a lot of experience before. And the no code gave me a little bit of leniency to kind of like get my hands wet without software developing and whatnot to learn what our tech does. And so it's been super exciting. It's a huge market space and uh, yeah, just fired up to continue to pioneer and help businesses get software that they might not have been able to have um, with the resources that are available to them today. Love it. I've, uh, I've gotten to know Ethan a little bit over the last couple of months, and this is a guaranteed hustler right here. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely. Cool guy to know. And guy knows everybody in the city. It's true. <laughs> and he just well moved here not even how long ago? <laughs> uh, it's been a little, a little over a year, but, you know, I moved, well, I guess I moved to the city March 10th. Mm -hmm. So I moved March 10th, and obviously March 16th of 2020, uh, yeah. everything shut down. So yeah. I was, like, super excited to get plugged in the city. Um, you know, I moved to Buckhead, and, dude, literally, it went from – everyone on the streets to like nobody even mm. in my apartment complex that That's I'm staying wild. Yeah. It's just really interesting process. But, um, but yeah, I've been able to really spend time being intentional, getting to know people, not just business related, but like getting to know people's stories. Right. And, yeah. and I think that's been a really incredible thing that I've been able to do and make some great Absolutely. friends, obviously. Yeah. yeah. How'd you uh, meet Brandon? Brandon, you want to chime in? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, actually, I, I mean, I kind of, this is a. Well, speak of is, being well connected. Is, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I met I'll, Brandon at a network. Yes. Yeah, okay. It turns let me, out let Ethan knows him too. Well, everyone in Atlanta seems to know somebody, you know. Who knows somebody? Yeah. It's, it's like, one level removed. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So with One Technology, I was on a conference called Venture Atlanta. And first time doing it, I guess it's a pretty incredible mm -hmm. event that they host at Mercedes Benz. I'm sure you all have been there. Yeah. And man, like I jumped on and once you kind of hear half a dozen pitches, 20 pitches, you're like kind of half asleep, right? But when I was able to jump on and I didn't know anything about Bitcoin Depot, Brandon came on and uh, just fired me up. Like I was like probably towards the end of the day or end of the conference. And uh, I just really connected with his energy and his vision and uh, just what he was doing at Bitcoin Depot. So we ended up connecting in one of the breakout rooms and uh, yeah, super legit young professional that has pioneered a industry leading company. So it's been incredible just to get to know him. And we jumped on and it's interesting how manifestation or God works where we got connected, shot me his information. And I don't know if it was like a week later. Um, this was during the voting time, right? We had to go vote for the presidency. And I got a letter in the mail. I literally just got back at like 5.30 and I hadn't voted yet. And this is like a sheet that outlined like, hey, there's an in-person voting. And I looked it up and it's like, you can vote until six. And I walked, it was, I didn't realize it was like 0.2 miles away from my place. Damn. So I was like, I gotta be a good citizen. I gotta go vote. So I literally walk out of my place at like 5.40. And uh, of course I see this young man walking <laughs> by and I'm like, it, it just blew my mind at first. It kind of caught me off guard. Like I was on the phone or something. I was like, are you Brandon Mintz? <laughs> so we had just jumped on the call and just serendipitously connected. And I just thought it was super powerful how that introduction even happened naturally, which, you know, where it is today. I think that's how we first got connected, right? It was like via that conference. And then 
Yeah, we've been just connected since. popped up in your yeah. life. Dude, it happened to me. I'll, I'll let you go right after this, but I was driving down the highway <laughs> with my girlfriend, Katie, the other day, and I was telling her about this podcast, and within two, three miles, on God, your billboard popped up right there. <laughs> and I was like, babe, that's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a cool moment, and that happened. So kudos to you for being out here physically and through marketing material. And, uh, yeah, man, tell us how you got started. Well, but even yeah, before thanks, that, uh, what is Bitcoin Depot? What yeah. do you guys I'm gonna, do? I'm going to back up a little bit. Come on. And yeah, thanks for having me on. For a second, when Ethan stopped me, I was like, maybe people are starting to recognize me from the <laughs> billboard. I don't know. But yeah, he came into the breakout room at Venture Atlanta and was like, you crushed that. That's the best pitch I've heard. And I was thinking, I don't think I did that well. Is this guy bullshitting me? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I guess, you know. He, re- he really liked it and yeah. it did better than I thought. So, uh, yeah, so I, I just walked out of the library voting and then <laughs> there he was. And then we just clicked and got dinner like uh, a few days after. But I guess what is Bitcoin? Is that what we're yeah, We'll with? start with what Bitcoin is Bitcoin Depot. Bitcoin Depot. Okay. So Bitcoin Depot is a Bitcoin ATM company where you put in cash into a Bitcoin ATM that is a kiosk with certain software that supports, you know, selling Bitcoin. And we send it to your wallet a couple minutes later. That's so, awesome. So, okay, so I'm new, I'm listening to this, and we'll get into the, the entrepreneur stuff, but while we're on this, you mentioned the word wallet. What's a wallet? Do I have to set one up before I use the ATM machine? Or how does that work with putting cash and the coin going into my wallet? Yeah, that's a good question. So with Bitcoin Depot, at least... Uh, You can use any wallet of your choice. There's like, you know, hundreds, potentially over a thousand different wallets out there. And there's pros and cons of of every single one. And kind of one of uh, the myths that people think out there is, well, you know, it's scary because I have to maintain my private key, which is essentially your your password to your Bitcoin wallet. And if I lose that, all my money is gone forever. Well, that hasn't been Mm -hmm. the case for many years, except for some wallets um, that require you to store your private keys. You know, with with most wallets these days, they make it user friendly and it's just username and password. And if you forget your password, you know, you can likely recover it. So it's definitely not as scary these days. And there's so many options for wallets. Bitcoin Depot wallet is one that I recommend. Oh, that's cool. (laughs) Would I make a Bitcoin wallet or Bitcoin Depot wallet before I go to the AT- like at my house, and then once I've done that, I can go deposit on the ATM, or can I make it at the ATM, or how do I make how do I get the wallet? Yeah, so you just download it. Okay, you know, like on my on phone. The app store, and it's gonna be like a minute setup time, really easy. Yeah. So how did you get there? Going into kind of technical, but also entrepreneurial. How did you go from, you know, you we talked about a company you started earlier, which you could talk about. How did that evolve into Bitcoin Depot? Yeah, so going back to the beginning, it was early November 2013. Um, I was already kind of doing some entrepreneurial stuff. And my roommate told me, his buddy, you know, put some money in Bitcoin and, and did very well. And I didn't know, like, what that meant at the time. But I looked up what Bitcoin was and I saw the price, you know, going much higher over time. So I knew it was worth talking to him about. So this guy came over uh, and he just kind of filled me in on on what his knowledge was. And I went way deeper, I felt like, in the rabbit hole than, than maybe he even did. And he put some <laughs> some money into this, just researching for weeks. And then I decided to buy Bitcoin after I wrapped my head around it, which took a, a while back then. And it was just very difficult. Uh, there was really just one major exchange in the world called Mt. Gox. Uh, I believe it was based out of Japan. So you would mm. have to get approved on this website that basically had one guy running it, and that would be a process. And then you had to wire money internationally to Japan. I don't even know if I'd ever sent a wire transfer before at this wow. time. I was 19, so... Um, that seemed a little scary. So Coinbase was new and tried Coinbase, uh, got approved a couple weeks later, placed an order to buy Bitcoin. And back then, if you placed an order, it would take like a week to get mm-hmm. to you. It got canceled and I asked what happened and they said, oh, there's like an error in our system and it's our fault, sorry. 
and the Bitcoin price had just doubled. So they just told me that, hey, you yeah. just missed out on all this profit, basically. So I was frustrated and ended up finding this other website where you can convert cash to Bitcoin by depositing cash into a bank account. So I tried it and I got my Bitcoin about 15 minutes later and I was like, my mind is blown. I just spent, I don't know how much time researching all these online exchange options. And all I had to do is go to Wells Fargo, deposit cash, and then... How'd you stumble upon was. that? Was that like Reddit or something? The same guy who told me about the okay. Bitcoin. Okay. He had, I don't think he had ever used this website, but he's like, hey, yeah, I think I've seen it on Reddit. It's just this dude with a website and just yeah. deposit cash in his account and he sends you Bitcoin. Real legit. So, yeah, every, <laughs> every, everything kind of seemed... Um, a little bit sketchy back then, and people were meeting at Starbucks, thousands of dollars in cash to buy Bitcoin. It was crazy. Um, completely different world. So anyways, you know, I saw this website, and I was like, this website is like just text. It's not even, there's no graphics, anything with text with hyperlinks for the pages. It was uh, god-awful. And I thought, okay, I can do this much better and bring this to a broader audience. So that's what I did from late 2013 through 2016 and there were just some issues with that business in terms of scalability and mm. I saw hey you know it's not just about money today but it's about what the value could be tomorrow mm -hmm. and at that time you know I understood tech companies and the huge valuations that they could have when they have recurring revenue so Bitcoin ATMs were uh, popping up I had tinkered with a couple uh, both companies had failed, the ones I was tinkering with in 2014 and 2015. So that kind of let me down. And I was thinking, oh, I don't want to get in the hardware game. You know, everyone knows that software scalability, mm -hmm. global expansion quicker is best. No overhead. But, but then um, I was graduating and I had heard kind of what the, the, the sales numbers were for these Bitcoin ATMs. And I was like, wow, they're doing that much. I need to get in and I bought a few machines, put them out in Atlanta, 2016, just driving around to gas stations, liquor stores, talking to owners, hey, you know, can I pay you X amount to put this machine here? They right. had no idea what's going on. Uh -huh. So real did, quick, what's your pitch there? Like in a real cliff note mm -hmm. version, like what's your pitch to those gas station owners or you know, with no, you know, they don't know what this is. So I assume it takes a great deal of educate mm -hmm. education. Yeah. So in the beginning, they would just get so hung up on Bitcoin and I don't, I don't get it. You know, right. what, what is this? And that was part of the problem. And then over time, as Bitcoin became more mainstream to the, where it is today, uh, you know, they've heard about it and they know, you know, it's, really important for the future and those concerns are not as strong okay cool yeah so a lot of times at this age when you're 26 yeah you're starting to experience some major success when did you first start to experience what you would consider some big success life-changing success i would say so life-changing would be maybe as short as a year and a half ago, but, you know, towards the end of high school, right after high school, I started a, a business that started opening up my eyes to what you can do on your, on your own versus mm -hmm. just working for somebody. But there were just a lot of, uh, struggles for years in this business, uh, to where it didn't really blow up, I guess, until probably right before COVID, it started really gaining some traction and and taking off and then COVID hit and I was all freaked out on, mm. you know, how is this going to affect my business? And it was actually great for my industry and crypto as a whole. Yeah. And COVID actually worked out for us. We ended up being one of the businesses that thrives in this environment. <clears throat> I love it. Do you have any war stories from early on or even recently that remind you that like this success is not random that maybe you said, maybe you earned it. Uh, any any moments that stick out? Yeah, and I think kind of the common trend is you start hearing about people and seeing people after they put in, you know, the decade of work or whatever, and, you know, you see what where they're at today. Like Ten years to become yeah, an overnight success. What they have. But I totally sacrificed a lot. I mean, it it's 
still kind of 24 seven, but it was truly 24 seven where even at UGA, you know, I'd be out with friends at a bar and like trading on my phone. I don't even think they really knew what was going on, but (laughs) until it was from when I woke up until I went to sleep, I was, you know, in business. I didn't have any employees and how can you really trust someone with irreversible money? One wrong click and there goes, you know, thousands of dollars forever. And then on top of that, the risk of getting hacked, it's, uh, it was scary. So I couldn't really delegate for, for years. And, you know, I missed out on doing a lot of fun things in college. And even when I did the fun things and people probably were like, oh, well, he was still traveling and stuff. Well, I mean, my mind wasn't in the present. I wasn't sure. really there. I mean, I could only partially enjoy it, I guess. But, you know, I've, I spent years working 3, 4 a.m. regularly. You know, that was the normal. And it, I started developing, like, pretty bad immune system because I couldn't properly take mm-hmm. care of myself. Like, I had to work through, you know, bronchitis, flu, cold, whatever it was. You couldn't take a day off unless you wanted your business to get a zero so i i couldn't go without my phone for more than a few minutes for i would say six years it took me six years to be able to turn my phone off for a day and to actually unplug there was no real vacation or or anything um even if it looked like i was on vacation i'm still like working never not working on the beach or whatever so i guess that's kind of the worst story and the struggle to get to this point but about a year and a half ago I was able to go on a trip to Europe and I turned my phone off for like four days let's go and it was life-changing I'm like wow there's so much time in a day <laughs> there's your life-changing success yeah. no, that's, well, no that's that's killer and you did that a year and a half ago yeah what are you doing today to make sure that you're protecting your mental health I don't think people talk about the struggle of entrepreneurship and the way it grinds down on you. It sounds like you, well, I got a couple questions for you, man. Yeah. Uh, how much of your work can be done remotely? It sounds like a fair amount. Yeah, all of it can be done remotely. I do like being in person just because it gets kind of lonely being right. remotely. I mean, I hired all these people. I have a nice office in Buckhead for a reason. So, you know, if I'm a remote 24 um, seven, it probably wouldn't be as fun. I like the people, you know, within the company as well so and you that's see super helpful you see the the office and the in-person culture as beneficial to your own mental health in in this endeavor yeah i would say so you know i think if i was remote just in a we work or an apartment 24 7 uh it, it wouldn't be as fun i get kind of anxious to get out of my apartment and mm my my home office to the office at least a couple times a week just change of scenery is really important Something about the structure of it yeah it gives a gives another home base and it gets you to actually get fully dressed for once right yeah (laughs) Yeah. do you um do you engage in any type of i mean do you work out do you meditate are you doing any doing anything for your head and your body your spirit yeah so the problem until probably around that time where I turned my phone off for a few days, year and a half ago, I I never had like a personal to-do mm. list, personal priorities. Mm. There was no personal to-do list. It was all just work. And I like couldn't even get a haircut. Like I couldn't even work out. I couldn't plan anything with friends because I was like, oh, what if something, <clears throat> you know, comes up? Um, I was a terrible planner. I'd be like, I don't know, you know, that guy, wow. right? <laughs> and... Over time, I realized you have to just get a personal to-do list, get stuff on the calendar. There's there's no right time for anything. I mean, you could work 24-7 with no sleep if you wanted to. So you just got to get stuff booked and, and figure out what's important to you because you only have so much time. Yeah. Like I value you know fitness and um, trying to eat healthy and traveling just hanging out with friends locally too. So, you know, now I'm actually the, I feel like one of the best planners out of all my friends, um, trying to get stuff on the calendar. And if somebody has an idea and they're like, 
you know, hey, let's, uh, what do you think about this? I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it this day, this time. Just get it blocked. <laughs> Lock it in. Because if it goes up in the air for discussion of, well, we'll have to think about it. It's just never going to get done. So just, you got to just get stuff on your calendar, whatever's most important to you and stick with that. Brilliant. At what point did you start hanging out with a winning friend group and how did you curate that group? How did, how did you find those connections? And then how important, how much, how important is it to maintain old friendships and relationships too, even if they don't identify on an entrepreneur wavelength? Gotcha. So I think my path was a bit different than a lot of other entrepreneurs because you know, the saying, your network is your net worth, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with what I did, it was probably the opposite. The more time I spent hanging around people, the less time I could execute because I didn't have any help. Mm. Um, I couldn't really just go out to lunches, dinners, do stuff like this to meet people because I'd be losing revenue. I was mm. the source of revenue. It was all manual processes until, you know, I switched to Bitcoin Depot and, and got it built up. Uh, I would say I, I started meeting a lot more successful entrepreneurs, um, just, you know, people working within companies as well, probably after COVID started because I was really building up my team and my ability to delegate kind of right before COVID. And then COVID hit and I had a lot more time to think and figure out who I want to spend my time with. And once people started meeting in person again, I didn't have like the work conferences, the work dinners, and it was all just open for networking because I was not really traveling. And I would say, yeah, as recent as within the past year, I really started meeting those people, like Ethan being one of them, for example, and building up that network. That's sick, man. Oh, yeah. So we got about five minutes left. So let's focus on the technical stuff. I want to hear, you know, I think what would be cool for our listeners are there's some people who may know what Bitcoin is and some who don't. So in a few sentences, explain to me what what Bitcoin is. And a lot of people just overcomplicate it. it. It's really not that complicated. We don't have to get into the way transactions are processed to be able to understand it. Right. The way I put it is it's a decentralized worldwide digital currency that can be used to buy things online and transfer money to people. Hmm. I mean, that's Simple. really it. And See, I don't, going I mean, into- I don't have to know, I can bring the guy that does <laughs> that, <right? laughs> Going into like a little bit more detail is, you know, it's the same here as in Europe. There's no USD Euro, right? And it really functions like a digital wallet we're used to, like a PayPal or a Venmo. Uh, yeah. For the most part, it's just controlled by it a computer network versus a government, a single person or a corporation. So, you know, I really believe that people only need to know that to start using it. When you get into the complexities, it, it scares people off. And what I always ask people, can anyone here tell me how the, the internet works? So I can tell you that it started as a military system and it was a connection of systems. Nowadays, I believe that they're hosted in super cool environments, but it's a big series of computers that are all connected and transfer data back and forth. Is that accurate or am I full of shit? Well, I don't even know the specifics, but <laughs> I'm just trying to prove my point. It's like, you don't know the inner workings sure. of how everything's connected. That's does witchcraft. It, does, yeah. it, <laughs> does it matter? I mean, we're using it all day long on various devices and we don't even know how it works. Right. right. Uh, so I apply that to crypto too. That's I mean, it, yeah. it really doesn't matter. So when the U.S. moved off of gold backing the currency, our currency is largely backed by faith in the U.S. government. And I'm curious, what is crypto backed by? Is it faith in the internet? Is it faith in the blockchain? Is it made up and magical and it doesn't matter as long as it appreciates in value. Yeah, it's not backed by anything. It doesn't matter if there's no intrinsic value, but it's really just controlled by economics. I mean, it's, it's supply and demand. You know, there's 21 million Bitcoin that 
will ever be created and more and more institutions and people are, are starting to hoard it. So the value will ultimately go up, but it also is important for the usage of it. And as adoption grows and there's more and more people using it, you can see that by the number of Bitcoin wallets in mm -hmm. existence, the more valuable it gets. So there are some kind of underlying fundamental fundamentals that help you I guess, place value on it, but supply and, and demand is a huge part of that. And do you see Ether or Litecoin or Cardano or any of the major smaller coins ever competing on a scale that Bitcoin does? Or when it runs out, do you see them ever blowing up to similar tens of thousands of dollars? That's a pretty common question and a, and a good one. So I think people are kind of looking at it in terms of, oh, is it one or the other? But that's not actually the best viewpoint. They're used for different purposes. Mm. So Bitcoin, it has become more of just a store of value. It's, mm -hmm. Bitcoin is gold. It's not really scalable enough in the t time period that we need it to power the applications that people are trying to build. Uh, even Ethereum is having difficult time scaling and, and a lot of the fees to just transfer ether from one person to mm -hmm. the other can be, you know, $30, for example. But they're ether, they're working on some things to get it to that point to where, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of tr thousands of transactions can be processed per second. So Bitcoin is digital gold. You know, it's that store of value that you're looking for, that hedge against inflation. And Ether is the internet. You know, you're going to build applications on top of it. And so every crypto or token kind of has a different use case. And, you know, we shouldn't look at it as one versus the other. They all kind of work um, differently than each other. But one may have greater dominance over another. You know, who knows? Ether. Uh, could be more valuable than Bitcoin one day. Do you think it'll be a situational thing like you, Ether is the coin for this, Bitcoin is the coin for this? Like, do you think it'll be segmented like that as opposed to like a ranked, like this is number one and this is number two. It's like, this is the best football player and this is the best basketball player. It could, it could be uh, temporarily, but in the future, you know, it may not necessarily be the crypto or the token itself. Mm -hmm. And it it may be more of the application built on top of the blockchain. that platform. Yeah. That's better than one versus the other. Cool. Uh, one, I got one quick yeah, question. Go I got one more too. Um, NFTs, do you yeah, own any? <laughs> do you fuck with them? What's your thoughts? Yeah, NFTs are exploding right now. It kind of reminds me of the um, ICO yes, in 2017. Yes. So, yeah, you got to be careful with NFTs uh, for a lot of reasons. But I bought my first one. Uh, it's not worth a lot of money. A couple weeks ago, just to test it out. Which one? Um, it was just something that Coin Telegraph issued. Oh, okay. just, it was like thirty-five bucks just to try it. Yeah. Um, just because I didn't want to get too far in the weeds, and there's a lot of, I think, regulation that nobody knows what could be coming, where you got to watch out for. Uh, but what do I think of NFTs? Yeah, I think uh, they're interesting in terms of being a digital collectible, right? You don't have to have some, you know, big auction house. It's funny I say that when the auction house Christie's sold like the sixty-five million yeah. NFTs, but you know, you can transfer a collectible item really quickly. There's only a certain number issued, so supply and demand, you know, value goes you think higher. Think they're the future course. or a fad? I don't really know what all the use cases are going to be for NFTs, so it's hard to say if they're the future. I think they definitely have value. It's something that's never been done before, and there are a lot of collectors in the world. It's It can be used in video games, people are talking mm -hmm. about, for example. Like, load your NFT in and, and play this video game with it. Um, I think it's it's still pretty early on to figure out how truly it's going to be used. I mean, if you look at, you know, ICO in 2017, you know, a lot of those ICOs had a white paper and did they even really follow what they said they were going to do? 
is what they said they were going to do even in existence right now? Did they pivot? Um, it, the roadmap is, is kind of difficult to figure out. But I, I do think people are kind of blindly throwing money at NFTs without understanding like what the liquidity is. Mm -hmm. Just because you read one article that, you know, uh, Elon Musk's NFT or Beeple's NFT is worth this much money doesn't mean your NFT is going to be worth 100x. So you definitely shouldn't just throw money at the wall unless it's small money like I did. Why not, right? Because yeah. um, the best way to learn is just to get in and play with the technology. You can only read so many articles. Absolutely. Is there anything that you want to say or anything we should have asked that we didn't? Uh, not really. I think you guys covered most of it. Uh, I would just say um, check out my website. Try us out. BitcoinDepot.com uh, the Android version of our wallet is out on Google Play. iOS is being released soon. Awesome. Uh, we accept credit and debit also online and wire transfers if you're buying over $10,000 worth of crypto. And you have stores all over the Atlanta metro, or you have, uh, what do you call them, hosts? Hosts yeah. of the BTC? Host locations that, that have our Bitcoin ATMs. B yeah, we have BTMs. about 150 in Atlanta, uh, 2,000 amongst the, the U.S. and Canada. So in about... We have 41 states right now. Awesome. Let's go. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on, uh, speaking some of the inspirational messages, the war stories, and uh, dropping some of the gems on the technical stuff. Uh, I think this is our first cryptocurrency podcast. Am I wrong? Yeah. That's accurate, yeah. So hopefully we'll have more to come. Hopefully we'll get to come here and in a few months talk about where NFTs are going more, yeah. talk about cryptocurrency more. Ethan, thank you so much for the yeah. connection. Uh Thanks. Yeah, and uh, excited to see where you go. I know you got some big things going too. I'm sure we'll see you again if you ever want to bring someone else on or we'll do yours. Yes. Um, but guys, thank you so much. Uh, you could reach out to Ethan at Ethan Cortazzo. Yeah. And then you would want people to reach out to you through Bitcoin Depot if anyone hears this and is interested. Or Yeah, the best way to get a hold of me, I actually pay the most attention on LinkedIn. There you go. Kind of social media. One of the other things, I cut my social media way down. There you <laughs> to go. To focus, That's but... But yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, and hopefully this is good content for all the listeners. Yeah, no, definitely. We've got some good clippable stuff too. So uh, guys, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We got our next event coming up soon. We're bringing the monthly events back. You know where to find us at HSTLUP, www.hstlup.com. I'm Jonathan. I'm Clint. Ethan and Brandon, thank you guys so much. And until next time, hustle up. Hustle up.